I'm Dr. Matthew Robert Lamb, Director of Bands and Instrumental Studies here at Houston Baptist University. Wanted to introduce myself to you, tell you a little bit about myself. You can see my hair is still all there and nice and dark and black. Students sometimes think I am closer to their age than I really am, but I assure you, I have been a musician for over two decades. I have been a teacher for oh, about a decade and a half. I'm happily married to my wife of six years, Kasumi Nakashima Lam. My wife is Japanese. Um, she moved to the States um, in high school. She's actually a flute player and a piano player. She subs with the Houston Symphony. But right now with COVID and everything being shut down, she has started her at-home piano studio, which is good because she's at home most of the time with our 14-month-old daughter, Mia Josephine Lamb. And they're also there at home with our two-year-old pet, Holland Lop Rabbit, Parker Lamb. So he, even he has a birth certificate and a full name. But like I say, I'm the director of bands and instrumental studies. I personally am an instrumentalist. I play the tuba. I have performed with the Houston Symphony and the Houston Grand Opera and the Houston Ballet. Um, I'm originally from Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, well, here I go. Actually, I was born in California, <laughs> but you know, I got to Texas as quickly as I could, about three years old. So I tell everyone, you know, I'm, I'm from Fort Worth. I, I grew up in Fort Worth. Um, so that makes me a Dallas Cowboys fan. I was there when Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, they were winning those Super Bowls. So I've been in Houston for a while because I moved down here 2002 to attend University of Houston, um, study music, study tuba. So I've been in Houston for a while. I'm a fan of Houston sports, but I still can't break that connection to Dallas Cowboys because that was my first you know, sports team that I, that I love. And interestingly about me, I, my first passion was sports. Right. I played football growing up in Texas, naturally. Um, not so good at basketball. It was okay at baseball, right? I, I did all the sports growing up, but I played football all the way until I had to choose between music or football. And, you know, silly me, I thought I had a better shot going pro in music and I would be able to have a more lucrative career in music. You know, as a 14 year old um, high school freshman, the two a day practices in Texas summer, maybe that was part of the reason I decided <laughs> sitting indoors playing in a symphony orchestra might be more my cup of tea. But I, I think this actually serves me well here working with the athletic department and working with athletic bands because I know about sports, right? I, I have a kind of a deep connection. And really, my first passion was sports. And, and it wasn't until, you know, later, um, about seventh or eighth grade, when I realized that I had uh, actually talent in music. And my, my family used to always say, we don't know where you, you got this talent from. But when I was, because uh, they didn't have any musical talent themselves. But um, when I was in my undergrad, I remember doing some research in a music class. And we found out. Well, I found out and I, I told my family that my, my mother's maiden name, Bonancini, an Italian name, hmm. we're actually related to a family of famous Italian composers who were actually contemporaries of Handel. And uh, one of the Bonancini's operas were as popular as some of Handel's oratorios. So I found out that I have this, you know, <laughs> connection to uh, Western art music. And so I'm a tuba player. I did my undergrad at U of H. I don't want to tell you guys exact years. So, you know, we're not, <laughs> not trying to guess my age and all that. Um, but I moved to Chicago for grad school, right? So grew up in Texas, so it was hot. Moved to Chicago, it's cold. <laughs> moved into a 450 square foot apartment in downtown Chicago. 
um, to attend DePaul University. Um, while I was there, I played with the Chicago Civic Symphony. It's actually like a training orchestra for Chicago Symphony. And really the reason I wanted to go to DePaul was because of the Chicago Symphony. As a brass player, that might be the number one orchestra in, in the world for, for brass playing specifically. I, I should tell you that I auditioned at Rice. So I was accepted to one of those three um, tuba spots. And I don't know if you know, Rice offers a full scholarship to their graduate students. And so I, I knew Houston pretty well. I had started teaching a little bit. I had started playing a lot around town, but I just thought getting into a new environment, right, getting this new exposure to Chicago, another big major city, would be would be good for for my development, um, and it was good. Uh, it was really different, uh, really expensive. Right, uh, my apartment was really small. Um, so after those two years, which felt like it, winter was the entire uh, the entire season, I came back to Houston <laughs> to have a you know big apartment, um, drive a car again, no more subways and buses and, and taxi cabs. Um, so I completed my doctorate at University of Houston, um, studying music with a uh, discipline uh, minor in conducting. And I talked a little about my athletic background, but I should tell you, I was in a Super Bowl halftime show. That was the one that was at Reliant or back when it was Reliant Stadium, I think it was 2004, I, I remember, well, I think the Patriots were actually playing in that Super Bowl, but I remember the halftime performances because that was the infamous Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake um, halftime show. The halftime show was produced by MTV, so I don't know if it's on YouTube. I, I haven't looked at it, but the broadcast, you can clearly see me doing choreography, wearing a big sousaphone. That's the marching tuba that, that you wear around your back. So I had to learn dance steps and, uh, you know, performing musically while doing visual stuff. So I have kind of that background of performing halftime shows, more like um, a production kind of show. But I, I also have experience with drum and bugle corps. Um, not many people are familiar with this activity. It actually occurs during the summer. It's basically professional marching band where it's audition only and the age is capped at 21. So most people will do it a year or two. I somehow did it for four years. So as soon as I graduated from high school, I auditioned for one of these drum corps, made it into the group. And then we, we tour for an entire summer. So around Memorial Day, you move in and it was actually based out of Chicago. Um, so you move in for the first month, you rehearse 12 hours a day for an entire month, you might get uh, a Sunday off here or there, really to do laundry, is because you're living in a dorm. I believe we're at Northern Illinois University up there outside of Chicago. So for a month of 12 hour a day rehearsals, you learn this 15 minute show. And then for the next two months, you tour around the country performing in NFL stadiums or big college stadiums. And so, like I say, it's competitive marching band. Um, the funny thing is you actually pay dues to do this. So by the end of it, I, I was being scholarship because I was one of the more advanced members, one of the first chair members. But this background in professional marching band kind of coupled with the background in the big productions, the big TV kind of productions for halftime shows. Also with my athletic background, kind of, made being an athletic band person uh, a dream job for me. And so that's one of my responsibilities here at HBU is overseeing all the athletic bands. So we have a, a marching band who performs at the football games. We have a basketball pet band who performs at all the home basketball games. And then we also have a concert band, a, a symphonic band where we perform on stage in uh, Dunham Theater. So I get to run all the bands here. 
but I'm also over the instrumental program. So later today, I'll be teaching a class on oboe. On Mondays, I'm teaching our string class, so violins, violas, cello, and bass, string bass. Um, I also work with percussion. We're trying to develop a drum line here to go with the uh, marching band. So a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of um, responsibilities here at HBU, but um, I view every everything as an opportunity. So it's just another another way to to, to make the school look look better in in, in the public uh, facing direction. You know, Matthew, it's amazing the story that you have. Um, I, I mean, HBU is a very uniquely special university for a bunch of reasons, but what is it about HBU that drew you here, keeps you going? I mean, you're doing many different initiatives here at HBU. What, what is it about HBU that you think is a standout? Why people need to really think about uh, sending either their son or daughter or prospective student needs to come here? Well, HBU is, such a close-knit community. It, it is a fairly small student population, which allows this really one-on-one -on -one connection between faculty and students. So all of the music classes are taught by professors who have their terminal degree. So we're all doctors of, of music, but we're also performers and teachers. So we all have experience out there performing, but we also can teach at really at a, at a high level. Um, but you find that at other other private schools. Um, but the fact that HBU is allows us to have this Christian focus, I think is something that means a lot to me. Um, I came from large schools and DePaul is a private private Christian school, but it's it's pretty large. Um, University of Houston is a, a public school, and it's it's really large. Uh, the bands there are are really big. I I see HBU not quite having a three hundred person marching band. You know we don't have forty thousand students on campus, so we're you know a fraction of that size. But the band can provide the same level of instruction, right? It can provide the same quality of experience that you get in a larger group, but you get one-on-one -on -one attention. So in most music schools, you, as a freshman, you will be studying with a TA who maybe just recently graduated from their undergraduate degree. Um, here, like I say, it's, it's the full-time faculty with doctorates. And so, you're getting this one-on-one -on -one connection. And what I love is that I get to know my students, not just my student, I get to know their family. I get to know their interests, um, strengths and weaknesses on a really personal level. And so I'm not just working on music, right? Everything we do is a vehicle to better themselves as an individual, as a, a human, as a member of society at large, but then also as, as a Christian, right? As someone furthering their connection with God. And we can talk about that. I can tell my students, I love you. I care about you. I'm here for you. And again, music is, is the vehicle that we do this through, but our act of studying or learning or practicing or rehearsing or performing, these are all forms of worship. And the better that we can do as individuals, the better we do as an ensemble, the better the university is, the better society is, right? The better, just the better all around. Totally agree. I mean, what are some of the areas of the music uh, department at HBU where students can enroll and participate um, that you would want to just kind of highlight. Uh, thank you for bringing that up because the, 
both the instrumental and the vocal department. We offer ensembles that are open to all majors. So we have two choirs. And so our the second choir, there's no audition, right? You just sign up for the class and, and you come and you get to sing and you get to learn, you get to participate. The top choir does have an audition requirement. And then for our bands, like I say, we're a, we're a small school. So we're only doing a single band at a time. So we do football, the marching band during football season in the fall, right? Then we move to basketball season, do our pet band, and then have the concert season towards the end of uh, spring. But the band is open to all majors. Now it's a little different than choir, right? You, you need an instrument, you might need some experience. I don't think I will give you a trumpet and say, let's play at a halftime show if you've never played a trumpet before. So we, we do want you to have some, some type of experience. But I've also taken students, I had a, an opera singer, um, I think last year, she just, just recently graduated, a really, really fine opera singer. And she took one of the instrumental classes where you learn how to play brass instruments. She excelled on one of those brass instruments and joined the marching band, earned a scholarship, got to perform with us after just one semester of um, learning and studying on an instrument. So we do have people who played maybe in junior high or middle school, didn't do it during high school. And then they reach out to me. I say, yeah, I have a clarinet for you. You, you still remember how to play a little bit? Well. Here's, a, here's the instrument. Maybe you can polish your skills a little bit enough to join, join our group. So we have um, these opportunities for all majors. Fantastic. How do students actually connect with you and with the music department at uh, Houston Baptist University? So they can reach out to me directly through my email. It's my first initial and last name. So M l-a-m-m at hbu.edu they can also go to our website that's hbu.edu slash music for more information and you know with the anticipation of uh, widespread vaccination and life slowly getting back to normal talk to us if you would about the fall of 2021 and spring of 2022 i know nothing's in concrete but getting life back to normal, how will that enhance the music department at HBU? It will be wonderful to be back to normal. I can tell you this year, obviously, right, it's been been a challenge for all of us. Um, for instrumentalists in particular, we've had, we have masks for our instruments. So I don't know if you, you know, a trumpet, so you have a mouthpiece where you play and you have the bell where the sound comes out of. And when you're blowing air through that instrument, it actually acts as a big projector for aerosol particles. So we have to cover these bells with nylon, basically face masks for instruments. Now, there's also air that leaks out of from your embouchure, from your lips while you're playing. So our wind players wear a mask, a surgical mask with a cutout so the instrument goes through the mask so they're wearing a mask around their face there's a mask around the instrument and then to socially distance we need about 12 feet because of how the the spray comes out of the instrument so we've actually been kicked out of our practice room we are the band hall is in the second floor of ball building and it's not large enough to allow the entire band to have that 12 by 12 foot space. So fortunately, we've been able to rehearse on Fridays in Dunham Theater um, on our Monday and Wednesday meetings in, in the ball, we're just having sectional. So it's, you know, a partial group. So really the students are only having full band um, one day a week. Normally we would rehearse Monday, Wednesday, Friday from two to four, everyone be together all all everyone all the time and, and so going from six hours a week of rehearsal to two hours of week two hours of full rehearsal has, has been a, a challenge because we we're not doing less music um, we haven't been able to do any performances this semester um, normally we'd have been at the six home football games and about 15 to 
20 home basketball games. And again, just because of social distancing requirements and uh, trying to stop the spread of aerosols, COVID in the aerosols, we haven't been able to perform, but we've still been rehearsing and working and building. So when we are able to perform again in the fall in, in public for people, we uh, we'll, we'll have a big, um, a big half halftime show kind of to commemorate the fact that we can have a halftime show again. So we're looking forward to uh, fall, next fall, hopefully being able to perform in public, hopefully getting back into sharp gym and playing at the basketball games. And then of course, doing our um, concerts on stage in, in Dunham. We're talking to Dr. Matthew Lamb. He serves as the director of bands and instrumental studies, assistant professor of music at Houston Baptist University. Um, Dr. Lamb and the HBU Music Department and faculty shape musicians through individualized instructions. And, uh, you know, you mentioned a moment ago that we have that family, and I've heard that word used so many times of people describing HBU, parents, fa faculty, students. It's, it's quite unique that that one word resonates in about 180 podcasts I've done. But then also you mentioned the, the Christian value. You know, we live in a world that it seems like most of the moorings and everything, the traditions of the past are slowly vanishing. And that Christian pillar, the Christian faith, it, it is an anchor in uncertain times. How important has it been the whole Christian component at HBU as you work in music? Oh, it's been uh, crucial, actually. Uh, music, uh, along with a, a bunch of the arts, um, sometimes can be a scary place. I'm, I'm thinking, say, any kind of performing in public, whether it's TV, whether it's radio, um, Broadway, stage, um, all these kind of art forms, sometimes can get so focused on the, the subjective, so focused on kind of a, an individual, personal, uh, almost one, one way street, one sided interpretation of things. And to be able to recognize that really all forms of art come from our creator and they're really just ways to worship him and when we can we can like flat out say that and talk about that in our class uh, in our in our rehearsals when we don't have to we don't have to figure out how to ease around these subjects and we can and we can talk directly about these issues uh, it's 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 very gratifying. It's it's very freeing. I know um, I, I I do work with public high schools. I, I do clinics. I work with bands and uh, of course marching bands and concert bands. Um, so I I kind of have to not not put a shroud over things, right? But I have to be careful about vocabulary that I use, right? And certain um, buzzwords. <laughs> In, in the public school, you, you might get in trouble saying things that some people label as uninclusive. Well said, Dr. Matthew Lamb is a real gift at Houston Baptist University. We're so grateful to you for everything you do, for the lives you're touching, the young men and women and that you're inspiring. There's nothing more uh, beautiful than to hear great music that gives honor and glory to God and inspires the arts as we know it'd be when you take away the Christian component if you did that historically you'd probably empty half the museums and a great deal of music in antiquity correct yeah yes I, I actually teach a non-major class music appreciation <laughs> <laughs> so uh, weird we, we talk about that a lot 
Well, we want you to check out the HBU Music Department, Dr. Matthew Lamb, the Director of Bands and Instrumental Music. HBU.edu slash admissions gives you all kinds of opportunities how to plug in. You can call 281-649-3211. Our graduate school, HBU.edu slash grad, G-R-E-D, or you can call 281-649-3269. Dr. Lamb, thank you so much for joining us. It's really cool to hear your story. I mean, it's very evident that God has been very much at work in your life. And we're just excited about you being at HBU and we're excited about the days ahead and how God's gonna use you along with our entire team to make a difference in the lives of men and women.